Senator Booker. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I, I can't help always but um, pause when I look at rooms like this and just feel a sense of gratitude and, and pride in our country and uh, to have people who've spent their lives, many of them focused on public service, uh, step forward to stand before our uh, a Senate Judiciary Committee for a lifetime appointment to serve in our Article Three branch of government. And I'm always moved when I look at the families of the folks behind there, and I can only imagine the pride they feel, as well as the sense of commitment to this country and our higher ideals. Our country's media tends to uh, highlight our divisions, but anybody who travels around this world knows how much uh, we have in common in a pe as a people. And I think that we all, or most of us, still have a, a common yearning that this nation will live up to its ideals. And over the history of this country, one of the places where people have sought one of those highest ideals, justice, has been through our courts. And there have been shameful chapters, and there have been incredibly righteous chapters. And not just on the bigger issues, uh, but often just someone looking for a fair shake at a crisis point in their lives. So I wanna thank all the people that are here. I wanna thank the families uh, in particular. It really moved me um, during the opening statements. And this, as uh, Senator Graham, who's been, I think, an incredible ranking member in trying to keep comedy in this committee and trying to create a process that can work, this is one of those times where we've seen a lot of bipartisan efforts to get to this moment. Um, I, I've, uh, as one of the few African Americans in the Senate, I serve on a, a Congressional Black Caucus, and there's been a lot of concerns about the overall process. Chairman, I know you're aware of that because you spoke about it at the top. Um, uh, I've been disappointed with some mistakes I believe that the White House made in a process sense, and I'm gonna do everything I can, uh, as I think the chairman's committed, to try to make sure that we address those process concerns. That, that uh, doesn't take away from uh, what I saw here today is Republicans coming before the committee uh, and those on the committee. But I think it's important to mention uh, my commitment to working to improve this process. I wanna uh, just finally uh, say uh, thank you to um, the folks that are sitting here, because this is not an easy process, it's not a quick process, uh, and in many ways you have to open your life up to the kind of scrutiny that a lot of you probably didn't, uh, didn't uh, uh, sign up for. Uh, in a, and I'm sorry, in an impolitic way, one of my friends has said this is one of the worst proctology exams anybody could ever imagine. And so I, I, I have limited time, and I'm going to do something because I, he's rascally, and I appreciate him at times. Is I just want to talk about Senator Kennedy, if I can. Um, uh, and maybe, uh, uh, Mr. Long, you can help me out with an with a issue between two friends who are often put on the opposite sides of the ideological uh, divide. Don't worry, this is not a trap. Uh, um, uh, but uh, I, I think people would, if they look at us, probably understand that we're not only different parties, but we have a lot of different beliefs. But when it comes to opioids, if you took the Venn diagram of our beliefs, there's probably a lot of common ground between Senator Kennedy and I. Too many people are dying in our states. And I remember, the reason why I wanna ask you this question, Mr. Long, when I was mayor of the city of Newark, and I sat down with my FBI, and they were detailing me a lot of the challenges we were facing with drugs, um, I looked at them and I, this was a bit of a trap for the FBI director because I thought I knew his answer was gonna be, I go, well, how do we solve this problem? And the FBI director looked at me and said very pointedly, we don't solve this problem, Mr. Mayor. The solutions to this problem are not law enforcement. The solutions to this problem uh, are things that you're gonna have to think a lot more creatively about. We're dealing with the symptoms of the problem. And so my, my friend, Mr. Kenny, and I have had some private conversations. I was forced to go to a floor and object to one of his unanimous consents. I'm not sure if he's forgiven me for that yet. Um, but I want to ask you very pointedly, when it comes to the opioid crisis in this country, um, is the solutions, in your opinion, having dealt with this space uh, in the law enforcement capacity, are the solutions to this problem uh, really going to come from law enforcement activities, or is it going to come from larger public policy uh, decisions that we might be able to make an effect? Well, Senator, I think that's a really important question. I can tell you um, I've prosecuted a number of opioid cases in my career, 
and was fortunate to serve as the opioid coordinator of uh, the Eastern District of Louisiana U.S. Attorney's Office. And in that role, I work shoulder to shoulder with not just state and local and federal law enforcement, but also public health officials and other stakeholders in the community to try to come up with some solutions. And um, we worked towards sort of addressing three prongs, um, prevention and education being one prong, treatment being a second prong, and enforcement being a third prong. And our approach was that all of those three, three things combined were essential to addressing the opioid crisis. So we need strong enforcement of our laws, but we also need uh, uh, education, awareness, treatment, and things like that are just as important, or do you, put a, do you put an order in them? You said they're all three important. Well, this is, again, my view based upon my experience dealing with the opioid crisis in the Eastern District of Louisiana, and particularly in New Orleans, where at this point, opioid overdose deaths in New Orleans have far surpassed the, the murder rate in the city. And so that was the approach that, that we took to try to address the crisis. I'm, I'm grateful for that. You may have helped uh, heal our relationship, uh, Brother Kennedy and I, and I'm, I'm hoping uh, that your wisdom will inform uh, probably some really strong actions. Thank you, sir. And Mr. Chairman, thank you for the Thanks, time. Senator Booker. Senator Kennedy? I didn't know he was going to get a rebuttal so quickly. <laughs> a sil that Senator Booker has a silver tongue, doesn't he? He's good. Uh, I know 